Hi, I'm Johnny Carly. And I'm Ricky Widmer. Today we're talking X-Men. Are we going to be getting the Dark Phoenix Saga? God, I wish I had. Every time I do that, I wish I had claws. Yeah, that's what I want. I wish I had claws. Mm. I think everyone does. And Johnny, we're going to move on into our next topic. And if you're on YouTube, you noticed I got a new cup. The sippy cup didn't work. No. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't work. Whenever I pop. took a sip out of it, it would just turn into foam and I couldn't use it. And I know if you're on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, or Stitcher, you're like, well, guys, I couldn't see, so it doesn't matter. But for our YouTube viewers, I've got the old Captain America cup back and I'm ready to roll. And we're talking X-Men here yes. on the podcast. And the reason why we're talking X-Men is Sophie Turner... You might know her as Sansa Stark on Game of Thrones. You might know her as Jean Grey on X-Men from Apocalypse. And she came out and said something. And according to Hey You Guys, she said this quote. And this is the quote we have from SuperheroHype.com. We're about to start shooting the next X-Men. We've just finished shooting Season 7 of Game of Thrones. And I've got a couple movies to do before X-Men starts. And then we're going on to season eight. So I know you're sitting there and going, well, Ricky, that wasn't a juicy quote. What, she didn't even say anything. Why, why is the title of this video about the Dark Phoenix saga? Mm -hmm. She didn't even say anything. Johnny, I am positive we are getting the Dark Phoenix saga in the next movie that right now, the title that's floating out there, X-Men Supernova. We're getting it. We're going we're gonna to get the Dark Phoenix saga. I... I would like to hear if you got more about your that. Your total cause... optimism, you're optimistic there. You're like, yeah, no, we're not. But here's why I think this. Okay, because I want to hear this. if you're familiar with the Dark Phoenix saga, you can go and read the entire background. I'm not going to give you the entire plot summary, but the two little snippets I will give you that sometimes the Dark Phoenix saga is divided into two parts, and it's completely revolved mm -hmm. around Jean Grey. The two parts are the first one, which is Uncanny X Men one hundred to or one hundred one to one hundred eight, and that's the Phoenix Saga. This is where we get, um, and I'm reading it straight for for the quote is Gray seeing assumptions of the Phoenix power and the repair of the Macron crystal. Then the second part is the Dark Phoenix Saga, Uncanny X Men one twenty nine to one thirty eight from the eighties. And this refers to her corruption and her fall. Think back to X-Men Apocalypse. Yes. We've already seen her thoughts and her dreams with the power. No, we actually saw the power, too. We've actually A seen... A glimpse of it. At the very end with yes. the Apocalypse. So, to me, I'm looking at it going, we've already seen the part that's the Phoenix Saga, the assumption of the Phoenix power, and the repair... Well, the repair of the Macron Crystal is... Um, interesting because if I'm not mistaken, I don't think we saw the actual um, crystal in the X Men Apocalypse. But no, they we could, did not. They could be playing off of something else. And what um, fucking what's his name? X Men Apocalypse. Give me his name really quick. Um, Apocalypse. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I totally lost his name. I couldn't think about it. That's how <laughs> rapid fire. Ricky, it's in the title. What Apocalypse was going to and what he was building to try to make himself live forever yes. in the body of Professor X. I think that this is it. X Men Apocalypse was our Phoenix Saga part. We saw her dreams. We saw her kind of have the powers at the end. Yes. I think that X Men Supernova is going to be. The fall, the it's going to be the the power of rise and then the fall, and we're going to get the Phoenix Saga. My only worry is, will it be another? Will it be X Men Last Stand Part D? Let's not last stand this again. Hopefully, they do a lot better. I, I hope not. I a, hope not. We have a cast that seems like they're going a little bit different direction mm -hmm. with it. We have a director seems he's going a bit different direction with it. So I think it's going to be a bit better. Now, I don't 100% think it's going to be the Phoenix Saga you're okay. thinking about. I think we may have an introduction to the Phoenix Saga, but if you remember in the end of Age of uh, yeah, Apocalypse, mm -hmm. when they go back to the lab. You were going to say Age of Ultron, weren't you? Yeah, it I was. It sounded like you were going to say I, I kinda Age of combi Ultron. I kind of I combined the both because I was thinking Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron and the Age of Apocalypse because he states it yeah. in the cartoons. But it's going to be the Age of Apocalypse. But X Men Apocalypse thing. is what you were saying. Yes. So what's what I think is going to happen? We're going to get an in, a more of an introduction to the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like more blatantly introduced than just a 
Jean Grey walking on air and mm-hmm. turning into a giant fire phoenix and defeating Apocalypse. Because at the end of the cre- the post credit scene, we have people going back to the lab, or a, ma- a gentleman with a really nice briefcase going back to the lab where we found Wolverine, because mm-hmm. we have to have a huge Jackman f- scene in there. Yeah. <laughs> and so he collects some samples, and I forgot the corporation that it's said on there, but that leads to Mr. Sinister. Yeah. So if nothing else, I feel like it's going to be a lot more of some of the Mr. Sinister storyline, which I need to read up more again because mm-hmm. I haven't seen it in a while. But I feel like it's going to be, be a little bit more based on that, and then we're going to get some Phoenix Saga in there, which would open it up for a third film based on the Phoenix Saga because there's a big storyline that goes along with that. Because the Phoenix... So far, at least Last Stand... They played it off very sad, in a very sad way. Mm-hmm. I can get it. It can maybe if it is part of Jean Grey's mutation, go, so be it. What it's supposed to be is an alien force takes over Jean Grey, and it hides inside her for a long time. And finally, when it's released, she can't really control it. Well, the thing is, to me, it's one of those things of. They never have to... The alien force could have been in her already. That's true. We never had anything it that could, shows. It could be like when um, we're talking about the Star Wars, what we talked about earlier, when everyone was like, oh, well, what are they going to do with Leia? Mm-hmm. Mark and I had that discussion, and Mark said, oh, maybe they'll do like an uh, off-screen death kind of a thing. Yeah. Where Leia will die in between the movies, and then boom, you don't have to write for Leia anymore. The Another reason I am... Looking forward to, and another thing I look at why we might get the Dark Phoenix saga mm-hmm. is the name. I mean, the name is not written in stone. They haven't come out and had a poster and said Supernova. Yeah, exactly. But if it's Supernova, and we've already seen Jean, Jean Grey, Grey with Phoenix the fire and... Phoenix. Yeah. What's a Supernova? A Supernova is fire. And it's it a big explosion. Everyone. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. But Another thing I want to read for you is this comes from moviepilot.com. Okay. And um, the article is basically a plot synopsis right now of what we have for Supernova with all the rumors coming around. And it says here that, um, let's see, um, suggesting that Jean Grey is set to become everyone's favorite good girl gone bad. And here's the quote. Gathered together by Professor Charles Xavier to protect a world that fears and hates them, the X-Men had fought many battles, been on adventures and spanned galaxies, grappled enemies from limitless might, but none of this could prepare them for the most shocking struggle they would ever face. One of their own members, Jean Grey, has gained power beyond all comprehension, and that power has corrupted her absolutely! Exclamation point. Now they must decide... If the life of the woman they cherish is worth the existence of the entire universe. And that's the quote. That's the plot synopsis that movie plot right now, moviepilot.com has right now. Okay. I can go along with that. And that what I'm hoping then they do with that is give it a better, a little bit more drawn off story, give it a little bit better mm-hmm. interpretation than we got with the last stand. And the movie right before it, where we well, get... Well, in Last Stand, it felt like it was just thrown in there. It, it, felt, it felt like rushed, we, right? It felt like we had a story, and then it's like, oh, wait, there's this love thing going on between Wolverine and Jean Grey. Ah, let's throw, let's throw the Phoenix Saga in there. Yeah, I felt more like, it, not just thrown in there, but a little bit rushed, because mm-hmm. we, sh- we saw a little glimpse of it, and I think it was a post credit scene, or at the very end of the uh, X2, X-Men mm-hmm. United, we see that some signs that Jean Grey survived. The whole water encasing yeah. thing. So the thing is, that was a bit rushed. It's not the greatest storyline for mm-hmm. a Dark Phoenix saga. So what maybe they should do, because of what you described to me, it sounds like there's a lot of thought that has to go into, well, for one, building up the fact that Jean Grey is going mm-hmm. this alternate route of being a good girl into now a bad girl. Things have to kind of snowball into it a little bit. Plus, you got ha- at the end that... You have to give the idea they're all contemplating. Do we take her out or do we do something like that? And I'm going to say, I still think if you're going to throw a post credit scene of Mr. 
what could be Mr. Sinister or something mm-hmm. looks for it. You got to play along with that storyline, at least inadvertently with it, too. So throwing in the two movies might not be a bad idea because the Phoenix Saga is longer and drawn out. And then it gives you a second movie of how do we take care of this Jean Grey problem, Jean Grey having this problem now. Well, and they do have, to me, different spots to leap off of. Because, like you mentioned, if we go back to the post credit scene from Apocalypse, Mm -hmm. it was all about the going into the lab, the same lab that Wolverine was from. And um, basically... It was everyone. When I was at the end of it, I was like, "What did I watch? Like, what that that told me nothing." Yeah. And then people like you told me, "Well, Ricky, that the corporate it's it's Mister Sinister." And I went, "Nah, okay, it's one of those things." Like they could do that, where it's one of those things where we see a movie of Mister Sinister's the main baddie. Yeah. But through that, we like this next movie is basically the like. What we saw in Apocalypse was the intro to the Phoenix Saga. Yeah, this might be the this push. This next movie was part one, the one I talked about with the assumption of the power. Yeah. And then we can move into another movie after this of, boom, she comes up. And it's basically Full blown Phoenix. the Phoenix Saga that they've got to defeat. I know that's one where it's probably like, well, Ricky, that might be too drawn out. Maybe they try to play it hand in hand and have the Sinister be the back plot yeah, and have the Phoenix Saga be the main plot. But the one thing I do want to throw out there, this is kind of, I don't know they would fit this in exactly, but from Mr. Sinister himself and his past, he actually cloned Jean Grey. Yes. He cloned Jean Grey and then that clone, which was Madeline Pryor, she had a child with Cyclops. Yes. So Cyclops had a child with the clone of Jean Grey. Well, close enough, right? Yeah. So <laughs> he I wanted mean, that anyway. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know if they go that route. I don't know if that's what they're thinking with throwing the Mister Sinister not at the end. Not to mention with Mister Sinister, we saw what I'm seeing is this guy looks like he may be the guy playing Mister Sinister when mm-hmm. he walks into the lab, takes the samples. Unless we already have a Mister Sinister, we still have to have him experiment on himself and mutate himself. So we still have that part of the storyline mm-hmm. to throw out there, too. Not to mention trying to get the X-Men then and trying to... Because if I remember correctly, he had a fixation with Jean Grey and Cyclops. And Those were his two main fixations out of the X-Men. So which could very well play into Jean Grey being pushed into that Phoenix saga. It, it, well, it could. And I mean, to me, I just... If this is the name we're going to get mm-hmm. in Supernova, yeah, then... We we got to go. We got to like to me. It's like Dark Phoenix Saga. You're setting up for it, especially yeah. when at the end of Apocalypse, how I was like all giddy in my seat. I was like, oh, oh the the Phoenix, the Phoenix, the Phoenix, and I just kept saying that, and people got annoyed with me. Oh, I remember because I was like, oh, oh, oh like a little kid when you get up and you want to just. I can't do it anymore because I'm a lot bigger. But you sit up and you you sit. You're like basically standing in Gripping your chair, to see you like no other on your on your feet. And mm-hmm. oh, I was so excited. Oh, and it was I, an exciting and, and moment why, to first see that. And that's why I see these rumors of Supernova, and I go, "Fuck yeah, we're getting Dark Phoenix Saga." Sign me up for it. Sign me up oh. right now. Take my money. Take my ten dollars. <laughs> we're going to see it. And I don't care. Just save me a seat right in the middle of the theater. Oh yeah, definitely. Because I... nobody likes sitting in the front. No one likes this. No. For the entire movie. I know now they've they've got leaned back possibilities, but yeah. nobody likes to sit in the front. No, not at all. Can't stand that because then you you have to like keep checking up and down to make sure you didn't miss anything on the left and right side well, of the it's, screen. It's a huge it's a huge screen. Exactly. It's a huge screen. But I mean, is there anything in this that you feel we didn't hit with X Men? No, I think we hit everything that we could talk about at this moment because we have nothing that really has come out yet. We only have a quote and a few little things from. Movie plot, movie pilot, mm-hmm. and maybe one or two other websites. Until we get more information, I think we hit um, hit everything we can talk about with it. Um, maybe um, throwing the wiki of the Phoenix Saga or the Phoenix we'll, Force we'll down throw below that in the description, so everyone can, anyone wants to know more about it. In case you're like, well, guys, I heard you talk about it. I'm not really up to up to pace with the Dark Phoenix Saga. We'll put that down below in the description, but. This is where we're going to kind of, this is where you guys come in. Let us know down below what you guys think. 
are we going to get a Dark Phoenix Saga movie? Am I kind of jumping the gun a little bit and kind of hoping for something we're not going to get? The one thing we are going to get, and I'm really excited for, this is going to be set in the 90s. Yes. So this is going to be our X-Men that we know and love and I, I I know I, I know that he said that this is probably the last one, but how do you have a '90s X-Men without Wolverine? Just saying, we might have to recast them for this. But let us know what you guys think down below. Thank you, everyone, for watching the R R Rick and Johnny podcast. Click right here to watch another squanchy video, and let's get rickety rickety wrecked.